Welcome to day five, fifth video in our five part series on creating a go to yoga class for your ideal audience or for you as a practitioner. This is a challenge that's going to help you, or a uh, five part series that's going to help you build a yoga class for your needs or your students' needs. And so if you haven't watched one, two, three, and four, please go back and watch those and do the assigned homework with that. So we need to develop a teaching topic or a demographic or audience or yoga niche, you can call it what you want. We need to discover the pain points of that audience or your needs. So what is it that you need to work on? And then we're getting more specific with an individual class. We're picking a single pain point or theme or topic that we're going to teach on for this audience. So uh, I'll tell you what I did in a moment. And then we get into outlining the class, which I did over here. And then uh, now we're gonna practice it. And this should take no more than 10 to 15 minutes as just if you just flow through it. Um, so that's that. I chose yoga for hikers. And the class topic I'm doing is, is hip happiness or hip mobility and feeling good in the hips. So we're doing hips for hikers, <laughs> uh, working on the hips and it's a yoga class and it's a yoga flow class so a vinyasa class and the one tip of advice when you're doing these quicker flows is to not get too sloppy so you should be modifying the poses because they're not super super warm um, but have good alignment stay in that good alignment good posture even though you're doing this in a quick sort of flowing motion if you have an hour or an hour and a half to practice your sequence please feel free do the whole thing on its own um, but if you're anything like me you're busy and you don't have time to practice your classes you don't have hours and hours of class planning time so if you want to see if your sequence works this is a, a quick way to do it so let's get to it so in my sequence I started in child's pose this is where I'd set up the breath and then I come forward, we're doing cat and cow. I'm not doing any of the cueing here. I'm just practicing the physical part of it. Cat and cow, and then some spinal extensions. And along with the spinal extensions, I think I wanna add some hip circles. So I'm thinking about, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how my body feels, how I would feel as a hiker and what I would need. And maybe you wanna do another child's pose with wider knees. Good, anything like, got it, got it, got it. So after that, we're coming up to um, standing pose. So we're gonna do downward facing dog and then walk forward and I added squats in between. So we're going to start in a squat, squat or squat here. I've gotta click this little button close. I know my phone's almost dying filming this on my iPhone. So we start in a squat and we might like wiggle around a little bit. Mobility and movement is good because I'm getting into hip mobility and, and it can be hard to just hold a pose sometimes. Straighten the legs, hang out, roll yourself up. We'll do a sun salutation A. Da -da 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 -da. Sun salutation. And I'll just do one to warm up from the knees because I'm not trying to get a workout in here. I'm really just flowing through. So I use my knees back to squat. So that was gonna be a little addition. I was adding that squat in between, sun, in between sun salutations. And then sun salutation B. So how you vary your classes is really um, with like, different little things you do to the poses. So your arm variations, your um, breath variations, or your sun salutation B. Notice I just skipped the chaturanga there. I don't want to hurt my back or hurt my shoulders actually. So we're flowing through it very simply with good form. Oh yeah, but then in my sun salutation B, I did talk about adding hip circles in down dog. 
And also in Down Dog, you can add, see, I really like for calves, skiers, heel side to side, that also gets into side of the body, rib cage. So that might be something I add to the warm up. Okay, then we're doing the um, standing pose sequences. So we're gonna do the warrior poses first. I'm gonna do a sun salutation to get down there. I like flow classes, so that's why we do a sun salutation highway or vinyasa in between. So warrior two was the first one. Open to warrior two. And then reverse warrior, that's a good side stretch. Elbow to the thigh, side angle. Good, then triangle. Okay. And both hands down, step forward, pyramid pose. Awesome. And you can step back if you wanna do that vinyasa or flow in between, you can. But I'm gonna skip it because I'm doing a quick version. Warrior two, reverse warrior side angle, triangle, checking on the transition. So knowing here, like I gotta straighten the leg first, reach forward, lower down, and then top hand comes down to meet the right. Step the back foot in a little bit, square up the hips, hold it down to pyramid. All right, bend the front knee, step back. And in between I had side planks. So we're going to shift forward. Why not turn and lift, extend, maybe tree pose in your side plank. So you can add um, intensifications. Start with a low version, add intensification, Oops, figure four, or a kickstand. How can you add uh, little elements to the poses to make it look like your peak pose? That's another thing you could do. So a kickstand, kickstand in front perhaps, ankle connects whoop, to the knee. Make sure you're looking where you're going. And then back. Let's do the second sequence. This leads to our peak pose. Crescent lunge. Kneeling or not, reach up. Oh, maybe you wanna do, oh, that would feel good. Still expanding the chest always feels good. Pull down a few times. Hands to your heart, let's twist. And the twist might be a heart twist with the hands at your like prayer heart center, or it might be this kind of twist. You can decide that when you get to class. Just know that you're gonna do a twist. Back up, what did we have then? Warrior three. Warrior three. Then standing. And I have, oof, standing figure four. So now we're getting into it, standing figure four reach forward maybe here and this is where you're like okay you can stay here or you can fold and you're getting deep into it ah oh, beautiful and then coming out then think think about the transition what do you want to do from here to get out because transitions are sometimes a tricky part for your class so do we want to go back to a lunge or do we want to just stand right away so I'm going to say we're going to go back to a lunge. So just like the way we came, lift the knee, extend, step back, reach up, hands back down. So this is where uh, the practicing, your, your class is nice in a flow because you're like, okay, what are the transitions to get to um, where I need to be? So crescent lunge, hold, do some arm expansions. I like those. Twist it. Reach up again, warrior three. Stand it. And then ankle to the knee. Figure four here. This is our peak pose. Simple, simple. So fold down. And then how do we want to transition back out? Lift, step back, reach up, hands down. That might not take up an hour. We might need to flow through a couple of those a few times or hold longer. Add some more options or variations. Um, I think here I'd like to add another core 
thing so we can do side planks again so you can repeat if you're like I don't know what to do just repeat what you already did maybe this time it's a leg lift so we'll add some more side planks might be a fun option and then we're gonna come down to seated seated pose or maybe it's boat pose you want to add right away so seated so we did like this standing pose that was a forward fold so getting into the opposite kind of muscles, the internal legs, regular forward fold here. And then I just realized this is, bound angle is a really good pose after that because it's also getting into the hips. So offer blocks, offer things to sit on. Uh, know that um, people are gonna have tight hips here. So this is a good pose to do. I like this little series. Um, it's head to knee pose. seated figure four pose or seated figure four here and then you pivot and twist or turn the hips pivot the hips down so you can twist or straighten the leg step across and then twist this is just a nice little like hip kind of stretching series figure four here here hug the knee kind of stuff you can cradle the leg so we'll do some sort of stuff like that. And we'll just switch other side. So head to knee pose or John Sasana. I don't like the, the name head to knee pose because I don't want your head to your knee. When you come up, you can even just go right to the twist. To the twist. See the pigeon pose. If you were wanting fire log to be your peak pose, this would be a good opportunity to add a fire log. So maybe this would be my peak pose instead of standing figure four, which standing figure four would just be a prep pose into fire log instead. So there's that. And then let's see reverse tabletop just to reverse it all out. Because we're still doing hips. I really want a wide forward fold. Those are one of my favorite things to do. Get into those hamstrings, forward fold it. And thinking of doing this, this is something maybe you want to add to one of your standing se sequences as a wide forward fold. So many things you can think about as you do it. Okay, so that's that. If we want to do a boat pose just to prep for the roll down, boat pose. Lower back down. That's also really going to help strengthening the hip flexors. And roll it down. What do we got? Bridge pose. All right, legs up the wall pose. Twist side to side. Oh, twist always feel good. Happy baby. Smooth hug the knees, rock, and get that lower back. Happy baby. And Shavasana. And that is how we would practice a uh, like yoga sequence that I've created. And that's just the physical flow of it. So now what you have to do is input your words, your words have meanings and your words can be very powerful. And once you have the first part, which is the choreography, what you're doing, figuring out why you're doing it physically, now you can add the magic, you can add the fairy dust, you can add the yoga stuff. But without knowing the sequence of events, it can be really hard to add the sprinkles of flair because if you do the sprinkles of flair without knowing what you're doing physically, people get really confused. But you can do a yoga class without any of the extra stuff and just tell people how to move their bodies and it can be super beneficial. <coughs> Excuse me, it can be exactly what people need and and want out of a class without you know, without having that extra stuff like quotes and and golden nuggets of theming stuff, like stuff that comes later. So you can do just a very physical, um, just pose and breath-based class and it's totally fine. It's hard to do the reverse of that if you don't know where to tell the people where to go. Anyway, that's that. That's how I just practiced it. I noticed in there where I wanted to add a little bit more. And then when I do this in an actual class, uh, I might even see how the students are and then decide, you know, that pose doesn't work or we're going to go to our elbows instead of our, our hands and we're going to add this little section. So keeping in mind 
your audience as you go through this too. So that's how you practice a quick, uh, your sequence in a quick way, 10 minutes or less, 10 to 15 minutes. Hope that was helpful. Now go do that for your ideal class, your go-to sequence, your go-to class. You can do this for as many classes as you'd like. Um, tell me how it goes. Tell me how your practice goes. And from here, there's so much more you could do, but this is the end of our five-day challenge or a five-day develop a, yo a go-to yoga class. Because once you have this, then it's on you to add the magic. Um, good luck, happy class planning, and I can't wait to hear from you later. Bye.